Hello and welcome to another episode of Romance of the Three Games. This week we're starting off by finishing Act 2 of Wu's Musu Mode, taking on the battle at Hulao Gate. First we review the text here saying that we defeated uh, the enemy at Sisui Gate, including Hua Zhang, uh, defeated by Sun Jian as it says here in the text, which is historically accurate. And now we move on to Hulao Gate, which is actually the same place as Sisui Gate, really, but uh, it's divided into two battles. And now we have to face with Lu Bu, uh, the guy we've been playing as in extreme mode, and in the legend at least is the greatest warrior in all of China at this time. So we're going to have to deal with him uh, ripping through our forces at some point during this battle. The objective is to defeat Dong Zhuo, and we lose if Yuan Shao, who's right at the back, is defeated, so he should be okay. Let's have a look at some of the units we have on the field today. We have a, a wide alliance of uh, three kingdoms, um, rulers, uh, and some of the other more minor rulers. A lot of the enemy forces um, initially facing us have lower morale than we do, which means at least at the beginning of the battle, we're going to have an easy time because the allied units, uh, particularly Kao Kao, Sun Jian, and Liu Bei, are going to be able to defeat their respective opponents uh, without any intervention from the player. And so when the battle begins, uh, I as Sun Jian have to uh, engage a bunch of forces that are immediately in front of my forces. Um, you have to defeat a couple of officers in order to open gates to access the rest of the level. So you can't skip over these forces even though it would have been a good idea to do so because your own high morale forces would have been able to defeat them on your own and you could just head off and do more important things elsewhere on the battlefield. Luckily, <laughs> these, guys, these guys are going down pretty easily. Meanwhile, it seems that Li Ru is ambushing Kao Kao's forces with archers. However, this ambush doesn't seem to uh, have any effect on the morale of either side, which means their ambush troops are just more men for Kao Kao's unit to kill, and they won't actually pose any threat. And while I defeat the rest of these enemies, uh, let me tell briefly about how uh, the campaign against Dong Zhuo uh, really came to an end. Because, um, well, see, at the end of this level, the game doesn't really show how it comes to an end. Basically, uh, it all re revolved around this great warrior, Lu Bu. The campaign against Dong Zhuo had, uh, had gone okay, particularly for Sun Jian. Uh, however, towards the end it was uh, kind of petering out because the alliance against Dong Zhuo was breaking up. You can see here that as I advanced out of the initial area, a very phallic self-propelling battering ram appears and starts moving towards the Hulao Gate. Uh, so now we just have to uh, wait for that to break through before we continue with the rest of the level. I'm heading up to kill some more officers. Anyway, I mentioned before that Dong Zhuo had this rule of tyranny after he usurped um, the capital and started using the emperor as a puppet uh, to rule as a tyrant. And he had managed to uh, anger a lot of people through doing this. And a lot of the officials uh, around the capital were trying to create a conspiracy against him to have him assassinated. And um, unfortunately for Dong Zhuo, he uh, was relying a lot of the time for his personal safety on Lu Bu while simultaneously constantly annoying Lu Bu. Because Dong Zhuo is basically quite a bastardy individual. Even though Lu Bu was actually Dong Zhuo's adopted son, he didn't treat him very well and Lu Bu didn't really like him as a result. You can see here I'm refusing to let this enemy officer Zhu Rong escape, so I'm going to chase him down so I can get his uh, stat enhancing item. One of the great ministers of the Han administration known as Wang Yun uh, decided to lead a conspiracy against Dong Zhuo to have him killed. He must have found out that Lu Bu uh, had been turned against Dong Zhuo because he managed to convince Lu Bu to join in the conspiracy, and since Lu Bu had free access to Dong Zhuo's household and palaces, this would prove a key advantage. Hulao Gate is destroyed, and now uh, Dong Zhuo is going to play his trump card to try and stop us getting through the gate. Did you think you could break through our forces? Here's the man himself. I think it is. It's Lu Bu! Lu Bu's come to destroy us! <laughs> Indeed he has. So Lu Bu uh, rides out from the gate. And now he's going to be a little bit of an issue for everyone on the side of Yuan Shao to have to deal with. I was moving north to try and defeat Zhang Liao, but actually he died before I got there. Uh, I believe uh, Guan Yu's subunit took him out. So you can see Lu Bu spawns in with maximum morale, which means anything he touches is going to die instantly. 
uh, if it's off camera. Uh, whilst I'm nearby, he'll be a little bit less powerful because the weird morale engine won't be having such an effect. So now I decided that I'm going to have to go and deal with Lubu myself. Uh, luckily, in one of the previous episodes, uh, user Darkwaver007 had mentioned that there's a secret tactic to defeat Lubu in a duel. Well, not defeat him, sorry, but to um, survive his duel. So I'm going to try it out now. If you survive a duel with Lubu, it massively boosts your own side's morale uh, because it proves that you're an equal warrior to this greatest warrior of all time. So let's try out the sneaky trick. I initially just run away, <laughs> and then I start aiming my bow out the side of the dueling arena. And sure enough, it works. Uh, we got right to the end of the battle, and Lubu didn't attack me, as was expected from the glitch. So very effective. However, now, on the real battlefield, Lubu is still going to be hunting me down. So I'm going to begin a little bit of cat and mouse, <laughs> constantly running away from him. Meanwhile, I'm going to go to either side of Hulao Gate, and if you climb up onto the gate, there are permanent uh, life and musu bar increasing items to pick up. So um, I decided to grab those. Um, whilst pretending to ignore Lu Bu and trying not to get destroyed by him, <laughs> making a quick escape. So as I was saying, it was Lu Bu who defeated Dong Shou historically as part of Wang Yun's assassination plan. It wasn't anything fancy, basically Lu Bu just walked up to Dong Shou in the street and killed him with a, a couple of guards. And this spelled the end of uh, Dong Zhuo's tyranny. It didn't spell the end of the chaos in the capital, however, as uh, Wang Yun, who took over as temporary leader of the government, uh, kind of messed things up. He refused to let any of Dong Zhuo's previous supporters have amnesty, and uh, this created a rebellion. And uh, Things got worse and worse, um, whilst elsewhere in China, all of the minor warlords had also uh, gone through a lot of political strife, and it kind of set the scene for Cao Cao, um, who had a very strong uh, power base in central China, to begin uh, pretending to take over the country in the name of restoring the government. You can see I eventually got away from Lu Bu and I moved on. There's another gate later on where Diao Chan is hanging around. Now Diao Chan is a, a fictional character who was involved in the assassination plot of Dong Shuo uh, in the book Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Uh, I think she may have been Yang Yun's adopted daughter or something, or was perhaps just one of the courtesans of Dong Shuo. And basically, Wang Yang there's a little bit of cheeky social manipulation to get both Dong Zhuo and Lu Bu to fall in love with Diao Chan uh, and then sort of make them find out that they're both having an affair with the same woman in order to turn them against each other and then that is what leads to Lu Bu uh, killing Dong Zhuo whereas historically it was just the fact that Lu Bu hated him and was just willing to go along with the plan and see what happened. In the game, Diao Chan is portrayed as like a, some sort of dancer character <laughs> who uh, beats you up with these uh, little club things she has. She has, but she's not uh, a very good character. So luckily, she goes down pretty easily. Let us meet again. Let us meet again. Quite poor voice acting there, I thought. Oh well. The voice acting, in my opinion, just gets steadily better as the Dynasty Warriors games go on. Perhaps as their budget increases. Anyway, we break through into Luo Yang. <laughs> Dong Shuo goes a little bit insane and decides to just burn the entire city in order to stop us from having it. I think it's meant to be a reference to how Dong Zhuo basically destroyed Luo Yang in order to move the capital to another city in the west called Chang'an, which many people thought was a bad idea because it was uh, very dangerous to move the capital city in a time of chaos, but uh, it proved very defensible to Dong Zhuo in the end. And his plan kind of works, because uh, he gets very rich from looting and burning Luo Yang before he leaves. And uh, after he's left, his superior defensive position allows him to defeat uh, characters like Cao Cao and Sun Jian in battle, and kind of um, breaks up the alliance by just wearing them down. And all the members of the alliance eventually, due to strife in their home provinces, are forced to leave the coalition, and Dong Zhuo ends up uh, <laughs> pretty much having free reign over Western China as a result. But then he uh, is eventually brought down uh, by an assassination plot by Lu Bu, of course, uh, only a little bit later on in the story. So now my goal is just to fight through the burning city of Luoyang to get to Dong Zhuo, which is sort of sitting in the middle. There's actually a large part of the enemy army positioned beyond Dong Zhuo's position, so if you like, you can avoid him and go on to get some more kills and defeat a couple of uh, enemy sub officers outside of the city on the west side of the map, but I uh, couldn't really be bothered to do that. I considered doing it, but 
I decided it wasn't worth the, uh, the effort to go and kill all those guys and get a tiny bit more experience. I may as well just finish the level faster. After all, you do also get experience points based on how quickly you finish the level. So that's also something to think about when working out uh, what route you want to take through the stage. So now we're going to see the end of Li Jue, getting some revenge for the fact that I didn't manage to kill him in the last stage due to him retreating. So pretty much after Li Jue's defeat, all that's left is to go and take on Dong Zhuo. When I got there, I found that Sun Shang Zhang, Sun Zhang's daughter, was already <laughs> trying to do so. So I'm going to join up with my daughter and take out this tyrant once and for all. It was during this time around uh, Sun Zhang's campaigns against Dong Zhuo that he discovered the Imperial Seal, supposedly in a well. And the Imperial Seal is a little... Um, kind of jewel that is supposedly meant to be held by whoever uh, should be ruling China at any given time. It's sort of a uh, semi-religious mythical object uh, which grants you power uh, ordained from the heavens to rule China. And Sun Zhan finds it pretty lucky, but he doesn't use it, I believe. He ends up uh, giving it to Yuan Shu, because since he found it as a spoil of war, he was obligated to give it to his commander, which was Yuan Shu, and Yuan Shu supposedly held his wife captive uh, until he did it to make sure he got this token of legitimacy. Anyway, Dong Zhuo starts running away when he realizes he's going to die, uh, but I'm not going to let him get away because I want the weapon experience for killing him because killing enemy commanders grants large amounts of uh, weapon experience, especially if I'm doing these little combos on him, as you can see here. You get bonus weapon experience for how many times you hit him in a row. So he doesn't actually die, he just runs away, but uh, that does mark the end of the campaign against Dong Zhuo. So the game doesn't really uh, wrap up the story with Dong Zhuo, it just kind of stops. Now we move on to the replay, we can see um, the enemy officers that we've begun fighting went down straight away, including Zhang Liao, who died just before I got there. Lu Bu appears, and then you can see he chases me around <laughs> a little bit in the middle, and I make my escape. Lu Bu pretty much just stayed around Hulao Gate for the rest of the level, uh, taking out some of uh, Yuan Shao's... Actually, I think it might have been Yuan Shu who was fighting. Uh, yeah, to taking out his troops. Uh, he managed to get to 50 kills at one point and he reduced the morale of a couple of Yuan Shao and Yuan Shu's units. However, uh, the fact that I was constantly killing enemy units inside the city was always increasing our morale. So it never got to the point where Lu Bu would ever be able to actually destroy our forces because the morale difference was uh, not quite large enough for it to happen particularly quickly. A very nice bash of experience. And I've unlocked new outfits, two new outfits, and a new item slot. Maybe I'll try and remember to um, try my new outfits. My weapon leveled up, so next time I uh, bring Sun Zhan out, he is going to be able to use extra attacks. Pretty cool. Additionally, I unlocked a new bodyguard and a new type of weapon for my bodyguard, so I'll try that out next time. And we unlocked new characters, as if that wasn't enough. I'm thinking I might change from Sun Zhan to a new character as we move into Act 3 of Wu's Mushu Mode. I'll have to decide that later. But for now, we're moving on to Mission 4 of Extreme Mode. So Lu Bu, the man himself, who's been the uh, <laughs> the man of the hour in the last battle, is now going to attempt to see if he can pick himself up some health wandering around in, um, I believe, the Zhu Chang area is what I select. Let's have a look. It has the joint highest exchange rate with Hei Fei. Welcome, welcome. What can I, get you? I kind of picked it semi-arbitrarily based on that. Uh, we have some interesting items, one of which is the 8th Pass. I can't remember what this does. I think it um, sort of jumps you forward in the game, so I'll suddenly jump forward to be on mission 12. However, I think my stats wouldn't have increased, so it's only a really good idea to do that once your stats are already maximized and you just want to skip over some levels because they're real bored of it or something. I decided instead to buy the uh, the Dim Sum, which increases the length of my life bar because that's going to be pretty useful. And that's all for now. Didn't buy any health, so I'm still on approximately half health. I'm hoping that during this stage I'm going to be able to find some health. Um, well, we'll see how I do with that. I decided to try out the Vorpal Orb instead of the Lightning Orb for this battle to see if it was any more effective. My memory of the Vorpal Orb is that it has a small probability of killing enemy units in one hit, uh, regardless of how much health they have or doing massive damage to an enemy officer. Well, we'll see what happens. The objective is just to defeat Zhao Fan, who's just sitting around inside the castle of Xu Chang. The only allied officer is Huang Fu Song, who's just sitting around and 
there's not much interesting going on in this stage actually, most of the um, enemy officers are just generic ones, there's no special events to trigger. It did say that there was a supply unit somewhere on the map, but I guess I never found it. There was actually one little group of enemies that I never bothered to engage with, so <laughs> there's a potentiality that that was the group you had to fight in order to discover the supply unit, which would have been incredibly unlucky. But uh, uh, never mind, I'm sure it wasn't anything too exciting. So, to begin with, we have to duel with this guy, Xiao Ten, Xiao Ten, sorry. However, you can see the Vorpal Orb kind of isn't really proving to be particularly interesting. I'm kind of basically back to how Lupu was at the beginning, where my um, Shockwave Kill Everything move is just kind of boring, nothing happens. I much preferred it, really, when uh, all the lightning came down and hit everyone simultaneously. I thought that was cooler, much more useful. It's possibly because my Vorpal Orb is only level 1, uh, the probability of actually taking effect is so low. That doesn't seem to be doing anything. You saw I actually took a hit there from that little bodyguard, so my health has dropped slightly. So, so far, <laughs> we have uh, not made progress on trying to make a profit in health. Now, I have to take on Juge Leon. We get locked into one of these weapon deadlocks, so I managed to win. Now, a little bit of help from Zhou Tai, who's actually proving pretty handy so far. We're going to take him down. Zhou Tai is just going to follow me around for the whole stage. A lot of the time, he doesn't do anything useful uh, like he's doing now. He just kind of stands behind you, um, sidestepping all over the place. Anyway, I managed to beat uh, Zhuge Liang. Ugh! <laughs> and then Zhou Tai betrays me by flinging an enemy at me, uh, further reducing my health. Not nice. So I came to fight Wen Cho, and he gets uh, a stunning attack on me. Outrageous. It means you uh, you can't um, take any action for a few seconds. And then it hits me again after it. Very de devastating. Basically, I uh, got pretty embarrassed at this stage because I'd taken so many hits. However, I thought it was okay because I actually don't really appear to have lost any health. Um, he only did a really small amount of damage. So it was kind of uh, not so bad in the end. Now, as I came into the castle, I found these two pots inside to smash them, and sure enough, one had health in it. So wheat. So now I have actually made a profit on health. So I was extremely happy at this stage, even though I took those hits earlier. Things are still going well. I saw some enemies were up on the castle walls, so I decided to uh, take the stairs up. There's a couple of guys hanging around up here, but uh, that's not really what was interesting about up here. Um, you can see here in the background there's a massive set of boxes, and I was like, oh sweet boxes, uh, because every box has a probability of containing some health, so I started smashing them open. Most of them just contain arrows, as you can see, but then, oh, another one contained health. Oh my god, I'm basically back up to full health. This was amazing, and look at this, there are like 500 more boxes up here. It was incredible, I basically encountered box heaven. Unfortunately, it was guarded by an enemy officer. He's going to go down pretty easy. But then, uh, once I defeat him, I'm going to spend uh, quite a lot of the time on this stage going through all these boxes, <laughs> looking for the last bit of health to completely fill up my life bar. I'll have to wait to find out if I do. <laughs> Most of the boxes contained uh, temporary stat up items and arrows. I very quickly got up to 99 arrows. Um, I moved on to another castle wall and found this uh, extra section of unguarded wall, which was also covered in boxes. So I'm going to begin uh, going through, smashing them all up. I got pretty uh, practice at smashing up all these boxes. Uh, hitting them from the side seems to smash them up pretty well. Um, and as you can see, a lot of them are either empty or just contain um, temporary setup items. Lots of these um, defense ups. Wu Tegu shows up, one of Yao Fan's subordinate officers, so I decided to take him out. This will secure me access to a couple of more boxes up in this uh, box heaven. He goes down pretty damn easy. Now I'm going to check the last of the boxes. You could say it's a little bit low for the greatest warrior in China to be uh, wildly smashing open wooden crates. But I think that these wooden crates not only were enemies of the state, but were uh, definitely worthy opponents for Lu Bu. They put up a good fight. Some of them didn't even go down uh, straight away. Oh yes, I get hit by a random arrow. And what's that? So I jump off the wall, and then uh, I find myself right next to the enemy commander all of a sudden, in the middle of all his guards. So uh, it's really hit the fan now. The Zhao fan, to be specific. I took a couple of hits from his uh, elite guard. Used my Musu in uh, Outrage, but didn't actually manage to hit anything. Luckily I had a defense times two uh, temporary bonus from one of those boxes, so it barely did any damage. So at least some of the boxes that didn't have health in them still proved useful. And then Xiao Fan goes down pretty easy, aided by the fact I also had an attack times two from one of those boxes. So the box heaven 
in this stage made it one of the greatest stages so far, probably the greatest stage <laughs> of the four uh, extreme stages I've done. I also got Lightning Orb level 2 and a Fire Orb, a little bit less excited about that. Lightning Orb level 2, seeing that I decided it was fate for me to go back to using the Lightning Orb. Um, so next battle I think I'm going to go and uh, re-equip the Lightning Orb and go back to sending uh, lightning bolts shopping down all over the place and taking everyone out because I think that was a extremely effective tactic and the Vorpal Orb, at least at this level, doesn't seem to be as uh, useful as I would have liked it to be. So next we're going to see what's happening in Yan Mei's empire. Let's see what's happening in the political stage. I need to pick from uh, a new set of policies. I like the look of Sun Krian's policy because it involved an alliance and having an alliance means there's it reduces the amount of direction right you have to worry about being attacked from and you sort of focus on single opponents. However, after I selected it, I realized that the guy I was allying with was actually the guy I was trying to invade by accident, Liu Yong, who I started defeating last week, and this week I could have finished him off once and for all, while now I've accidentally allied with him. So I'm going to have to pick a new direction to invade him. And I have two choices. I can either invade uh, Ling Ling, one of uh, Sun Zhan's territories, or the Nanman provinces, controlled by Meng Chuo. Uh, the Nanman provinces, as I said before, are a little bit annoying to invade. However, I noticed that they only have three officers, one of which is a ruler, and you'll see in a moment that means they basically only have two officers. And I thought, with that little enemy resistance, I can overcome the annoyance of this map in order to take it now, rather than taking it later on when it's going to be more difficult. Oh, I can see you here, I'm showing you the, uh, the goals that each character has. Uh, each character has a set of goals, and every time you complete one, they level up. And I think it's uh, unique to each character, and it's vaguely based on what sort of character type they are. So Sun Quan, being a strategist, most of his goals are to have his political proposals accepted. I'm taking my new lieutenant, Lu Mi, who, uh, Yu Mi, sorry, he's going to prove one of the stars of the show here. I got him from uh, Liu Yong's forces last week, and I wasn't really expecting much from him because he didn't have any troops in his unit. Uh, but we'll see how he does. And I'm taking Ma Zhong, one of the units I captured from the Yellow Turbans earlier on. So the Nan Man are going to be deploying elephants against us, and this is not going to prove particularly uh, devastating for us, as we'll see. Anyone who faces you, beauties, is going to be flattened! <laughs> Alright, let's go and crush those soft northerners! <laughs> so that was Meng Huo, king of the Nan Man tribes, who we're going to be facing now. This has a giant map, um, which in the Musu modes, when you have to face this map, is incredibly difficult to deal with because of a variety of traps and special events that happen. Luckily, a lot of those uh, don't happen on Empire's mode. However, one particular annoyance is still present, which we'll see later on. Meng Huo is not on the map to begin with, because when you face an enemy's capital region, the ruler of that region cannot fight on the map until you've captured um, a supply line of bases that goes up to near their main camp, then they'll appear. Which means to begin with, it's my five officers versus their two, so I'm definitely this outnumbering them. Stay so I first I just have to move forward and start taking out some bases. You might have noticed there that you, me, who began with no troops, began with really high morale. I didn't know why. And here, you, me takes over an enemy base Enjoy right at the beginning attack. of the map. Um, beginning of the game, sorry. And then immediately after, he begins another advance on a new base. So I was pretty impressed with Yumi. He managed to uh, <laughs> single-handedly take over an enemy base. And Sun Quian has also taken a base. So we are very rapidly advancing. The enemy officers fell back right at the beginning, which gave us a chance to take their first line of bases. But now I catch up with Meng Yu. Decide to take him on. Oh, what a smash! That was like a massive strike. Hit the first line of the enemy's um, little group of units. And the whole, all the ones at the back died. Their bodies flew back and killed them. So that was an incredible bit of bowling skill. And now, Meng, Huo, uh, Meng Yo, you, sorry, decides to uh, try and make his escape. I decide to utilize my ranged attack, hit him with some arrows. It knocks him down and then he starts running back towards me, but then suddenly realizes he's about to die and runs off. Yu Mi is wildly shouting for all units to go forward, despite the fact he has no troops. I began to think he was kind of delusional at this point, and that he has some sort of imaginary army that he was commanding as he went about on his own. Perhaps he was just lonely. Meng Yu goes down to one of my arrows, and I'm able to take over uh, the base, and then I move on to this area. Now this is the annoying area, you can see there's this little blue watery stuff surrounding the enemy base, and this is supposed to be a poisoned swamp. 
Uh, the idea is that the Nanman forces are immune to it, whereas uh, us dirty northerner forces um, are poisoned by the waters, which means there's no way for me to get over to the base without going through the poisoned water. Mahjong takes over an enemy base, so that's a another good uh, effort put in by one of my lieutenants. So I just run through the poison, you can see my health is just declining now as I stand in the water. I decided the ideal thing to do would be to get out of the water and just defeat the enemy troops using my bow, but by the time I decided that, there's only actually one enemy troop We've left. Their stronghold. <laughs> Luckily, when I take the stronghold, uh, a massive thing of life suddenly appears, so I can pick that up to make up some of the losses I had in having to get over there. So I managed to run through uh, the rest of the swamp the fairly team. easily, take over an enemy base near the enemy's main camp, and Meng Huo shows up on the field, so now the enemy has three officers, they can be slightly more difficult. Yumi uh, gets another enemy base on the east side of the map, so he's now single-handedly taken two bases. Incredibly uh, impressive. Not quite up to Yan Mei standards, who has now taken like you five bases, but uh, anyway, there was a little bit of drama where I had to go back because the enemy started capturing one of the bases that I had captured off them uh, with a cheeky uh, side attack. But then, um, once I dealt with that, I returned to the base I was working on just now, and Zhu Rong, one of the enemy officers, is hanging around. She's one of the few female officers in the game. She's supposed to be the wife of Meng Huo. Uh, she calls herself the goddess of fire quite a lot. While I was fighting her, Yumi takes a yet another enemy base. Yumi is continuing his one-man rampage down the east side of the map. In fact, he's about to link up with my forces. He's uh, fought all the way down to where I am in approximately the same amount of time. But it seems that Yan Mei has a rival for the greatest warrior of the Yan Mei Empire in Yumi. Yu Rong goes down, and I proceed to take out the last of her troops hanging around just for sport, even though because they have no morale, they would have died if, um, on their own if I just walked away. Suddenly I get blindsided by a horse, and I was like, what the hell was that? It turns out it's Yumi! <laughs> Yumi is still wildly calling for all units to engage, and then he starts just crazily riding around in circles on his horse, and I was confused at why he was doing this, and confused at why he had a horse. Because none of my other officers seem to have a horse. So what's so special about Yumi? Well, perhaps he's just one of the greatest heroes of the land, and he uh, deserves a horse. I decided to leave him to it, just to run around in circles. Sun Quan decides to begin his advance, uh, at this stage, I believe he actually stages an ambush on Meng Huo in the enemy camp. Which meant I didn't have to worry about Meng Huo taking out any of my units, because ambush troops are very strong. Can stop us. <laughs> Yumi is shouting wildly that nothing can stop us, and perhaps he is right. Uh, ne definitely nothing can stop him, he's a beast. Suddenly all these enemy troops just uh, appear out of nowhere. I think there may have been a slight glitch, or the uh, game forgot to load them until the last minute, they just appeared. Uh, so I took them out and then fought my way into the enemy main camp where Meng Huo was uh, riding around on an elephant causing a little bit of trouble but uh, this isn't going to be an issue because I can very easily just take this element for myself and, uh, elephants are <laughs> for myself, sorry, now I'm going to be the one causing trouble elephants are an interesting unit, they have two attacks you can hit stuff with your trunk or you can do a pounding uh, ground attack like I'm doing now which is kind of like Lu Bu's kill everything attack and it just sends out a shockwave you saw Yu Mi also got up to 50 kills there so not only is he capturing all these bases it seems he's uh, racking up a fair amount of kills on the enemy forces we start being very unfair to Meng Huo uh, sort of pounding on him in the corner he actually hits me off the elephant at the last minute there which is very cheeky I thought all of our officers are just uh, keeping him in the corner extremely cheaty and then I think my elephant managed to take him out uh, right at the end Another victory for the forces of Yan Mei, and Nan Man, one of the most annoying places to take, has been captured with relative ease <laughs> due to the uh, low strength of the enemy force and the incredible performance of Yu Mi, and in fact Sun Quan and Mai Zhang, uh, when Sho actually didn't put up any uh, performance in that battle at all. I don't know what he was doing, it's possible he was sticking back in our main camp doing some defending, and I didn't really see anything of him. But anyway, some new superstars definitely have emerged within Yan Mei's empire. We'll see how uh, Yumi performs in the next battle, just in case this was a one-off. So now I wanted to hire uh, Zhu Rong, but uh, I realized I didn't have enough money. I've spent all my money hiring those other officers, and now I can't really get any more. I had just enough to put Meng Yu in my force, even though he didn't really impress me. But I thought I'll put him in anyway, just so I have a uh, six, uh, six officers to play with, because that's the maximum you can take into any particular level. So it's good to get at least six, just to um, maximize the amount of commanders you can play with. We'll see what happens uh, in the next political phase next time on Romance with Three Games. I hope you enjoy seeing these three battles, and there'll be three more to come in the very near future. Feel free to leave any feedback you have in the comments below, and I hope the examples of Lubu and in fact Yumi will inspire you 
to put fear into your enemies for the next week until you see the next episode of Romance of the Three Games.